Hey guys, Bungie just put out a weekly update. In this one, they go over a bit of the new weapon foundries coming in the Taken King. They don't show off everything, but we do get a good look at some of the Hake, Omelon, and some Suros weapons. We've seen pretty much all of these from the E3 footage, but there's a bit of new stuff here. Namely, they give us some facts about what will make these weapons unique from each manufacturer. First up, I'll read what they said about Hake, and I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly. On a Hake talent grid, you'll see a simplified set of scopes that work best for the weapon, front-loaded perk nodes with the stat upgrade options occupying the final column. And the Hake perk selection is focused on offensive actions and combat tactics. Hake pulse rifles fire a burst of four rounds with damage adjusted to match the DPS of a three-round burst, meaning the pulse rounds do less individually but are equal as a group and the fire time between bursts will be slightly faster. I'm really digging the look of these hockey weapons. Lots of sharp angles everywhere, and the function over form is really strong here. From what I remember, the hockey weapons also had a very punchy sound to them and really felt like they were doing a lot of damage. It's really interesting how the pulse rifle will also shoot four rounds instead of the normal three. It'll do the same amount as a three burst shot, but just spread over four, and I can't wait to try that out. The Omelon weapons up next were some of the cooler ones that we got to see at E3. They're supposedly the pioneers of energy weapons. They sport lighter ergonomic frames, so they all come with a really generous base handling stat. And the talent grids focus on behavioral perks over customization. The legendary talent grids are the only ones that are going to offer three perks, one as the first non-scope upgrade, and two as a binary choice in the final column. If I remember correctly, the Omelon weapons had a scope that highlighted enemy targets for you, and this made target acquisition really easy for me. Knowing that these guns will have a snappy feel to them due to them having a generous base handling stat, as they say, that sounds like that'll be a really good choice for my PvP playstyle. I can't wait to get my hands on these as well. And finally, they showed us some of the new Suros weapons. The Suros talent grids offer two columns of two stat perks, granting more options for changing weapon stats than any other foundry. If you want a weapon that can flex from close quarters to range, quick to powerful, fast handling to hard hitting, and all with the swap of a few nodes, then Suros might be the one. So it really sounds like Suros weapons won't be built with one playstyle in mind. They'll give you a large array of options and perks and scopes to give you the most options in one weapon. And just as a side note, I am absolutely in love with the look of that scout rifle. It really embodies the perfect form of what a scout rifle should be. Small and light so it won't get in the way of performing its function. And that's all they were really willing to talk about the new foundries. They did leave off with this statement though. Factions will have their own guns. Classes will have their own guns. More quests will lead you directly to specific guns. Even the gunsmith will have a new way to include you in his enterprise. So basically what they're saying is, we're getting class guns and quests to lead to specific guns. This is something that we've been after for a long time. Not only will people have allegiances to certain foundries, but now we'll have class-specific weapons to go out and get. I'm not sure why they said factions will have their own guns, because we already have them now, unless they mean that we'll have their own foundry weapons. So no matter what, I'm pretty excited about using all of these new guns, provided I actually have the vault space to use them. Next up, they went ahead and spoiled the Trials map, or maps, for this weekend. The answer is that all of the maps that you have currently played for Trials of Osiris will be available. Derek Carroll had this to say, By now, you know how this works. Each week, we select a single map to be the combat arena for the entire weekend's Trials of Osiris, and everyone is thrilled with the choice. This week only, though, we are setting the Trials of Osiris playlist to random, just like the Elimination playlist, but on the six Trials maps where you've made your weekend homes. So I'm definitely excited to try this out. I've been wanting them to vary up the maps a little bit more by maybe including more, but I guess this is a good way to try it out. They left off by saying next week Brother Vance will be competing with Lord Saladin for our attention. So that means the Iron Banner will be coming. And I, for one, will only be visiting Brother Vance next week as the Iron Banana has become way too laggy for me to even take it seriously. Finally, within the next month, we will be seeing a hotfix come out that will do the following. Fix the Husk of the Pit drop rate and increase it from its original rate. Also, we'll be getting an email that has the Nepal shader and emblem. This patch will also be the precursor for the 2.0 patch, so once we see this one come out, 2.0 is just around the corner. And that's it for this week's weekly update. I hope you guys found some of this helpful. I, for one, am really excited to try out some of these new foundry weapons, and I hope you guys are too. This has been Patrick Casey with Planet Destiny, your guide to the Destiny universe.